Hope you're well. Happy Happy Valentine's Day here in Brazil. Actually, they don't call it Valentine's Day. They call it Lover's Day. So I was reflecting a little bit on relationships and romance, marriage. And I was remembering that I uh, yesterday I saw a article in the news. There was a, advice about romantic relationships from a monk. And I didn't read the article, but it stuck in my mind that, that there was a celibate monk probably in solitude somewhere in a monastery giving advice about relationships. And then I remembered uh, the Dalai Lama talking about people soliciting um, advice about relationships and specifically about their sex lives. And the Dalai Lama said, you know, it's so funny. He said, I'm a virgin. I never had sex my whole life. And people ask me for advice on sex. He said, I, I don't know what to tell them. He said, I, you know, I have some idea about sex from, from TV and movies and, and books and, and my imagination. And he said, I've even had dreams where I was almost having sex. And then I remember my vows and I stopped. He said, but it's, it's very funny that people come to me seeking advice about their sex lives. So I was thinking it's also so, sort of funny that, um, a, a celibate, I assume, a celibate monk gives advice on on romance and relationships. But it, maybe there was really good advice. I actually didn't read the article. Chagat Rinpoche was interesting because even though he had been a monk earlier in his life, he was not a, a monk when I knew him and when most of us knew him. In fact, he was married to Kadro and uh, in a relationship. And he had been married previously to Kadra as well with Jigme Rinpoche's mother, Karma. So Chag Rinpoche was not only uh, an amazing Dharma teacher and, and in a married relationship, but also he taught relationship. And it's very, very rare to find a spiritual teacher that actually teaches relationship. Now, teaching relationship, there are many ways to do it. One of them is, is, was through Rinpoche's example, where he would demonstrate to us an enlightened relationship with Kadro. And it was amazing to see the two of them. And their dynamic was incredible. And the love that they had for each other was incredible. But also the level of non-attachment. So we, we often get a little bit perplexed how can we be in, a love, be in a loving relationship and not be attached? But in fact, when, when we go deeper and deeper into our practice and our understanding of attachment, we see that actually attachment is the antithesis of love. Attachment is like an invasive vine that grows up next to a tree. And it looks like the tree as it strangles the tree's life force, the invasive vine being attachment and the tree being love, it pretends that it's love and camouflages itself as love. But in fact, it's the opposite of love and it strangles the life force out of love and kills the tree, the tree of our love. Because if you really look at it, attachment means controlling, Attachment means clinging. Attachment means possessiveness. Attach attachment means jealousy. Attachment means uh, lack of trust, which are all of the things that destroy our relationships over and over again. So love means simply working for and desiring the happiness of our partner or the happiness of those around us, working for their happiness with no 
selfish attachment involved no selfish agenda no ego agenda Rinpoche used to advise us when we're going into a relationship don't look for that person to fill your voids don't look for that person to fix what's wrong with your life go into the relationship thinking I'm going to help that person grow I'm going to help that person become happy on the relative level and the ultimate level. What's missing in our life, we need to fix from within. We need to change from within. And that's actually another reason to enter into relationship is maybe many of us in past lives have been monks and nuns and we've, been, we've uh, attained a level of peace with that sort of a life. I have that sensation sometimes that many of us were monks and nuns in the past. Maybe we need to learn what's in relationship now because relationship goes deep within us. It stirs up all kinds of emotions that otherwise might be there latent, like jealousy and insecurity, possessiveness. But it's nice to have the opportunity to go into those places and work with those energies. And it's nice to have a teacher that can guide us with that, which is what Rinpoche was available for. And the way he taught relationship, it doesn't necessarily coincide with our relationships, with what, what our ideas of what a perfect relationship should be. We think it should be somebody that does everything that I want, the way I want it all the time, is just sweet all the time, and cooks nice meals and cleans the dishes and cleans the house and doesn't bother me, but it's there for me when I need them. You know, that's our idea sometimes of a perfect relationship. Somebody that never disagrees with me. We agree about everything politically. But in fact, that doesn't exist. Even more so, as spiritual practitioners, the principal reason to enter into a relationship is for spiritual growth. Again, not very romantic, but at the same time, very beautiful because it means we can incorporate every aspect of our life into the spiritual path, including relationships, including romance, love and affection. I think for many of us, it's the last frontier on our spiritual quest is to transform this aspect of existence into spiritual path, transform relationships, marriage, family, love, sex, all of that into the spiritual path. How? By reducing our ego clinging by working for the happiness of those around us, by working for the happiness of our partner, by doing everything we can on every level possible to make them more happy, ultimately leading them to enlightenment. That's the real ultimate reason for relationships. If we go into the relationship with the small mind of what's in it for me, almost for sure we're going to be disappointed. Almost for sure we're going to have problems. Either way, we'll have problems, but we're going to have more problems and they're going to be much, much harder to solve if we go in with that small mind. As I said earlier today, if we are on this path, our goal is to work for the happiness of all beings, to have love and compassion for all beings. So what better place to start than with our life partner? That's a great training ground. In theory, you already love this person, but do you really love them without any expectations, without any ego clinging? Because that is the goal not just with our life partner, but with everybody. That's enlightenment. So it's a great opportunity to train with our life partner, 
starting today. Don't fall into your old negative habits. When they do something that irritates you, use it as an opportunity to train your mind in patience. Zunzar Chensi is famous. Whenever somebody does something that's irritating or negative or some horrible story on the news, he says, compassion, compassion. I try to remember that too. When I see something that irritates me, somebody does something that bothers me, I immediately try to remember Zonzar Chensi Rinpoche and think, compassion, compassion. So let's train that way with our partners. Let's train that way with our families and the people around us. They're going to do things that irritate us because we're irritable. Not because of some sort of perceived flaw in their character. It's our own flaw. So how do we transform that? Compassion. Compassion for them. Compassion for us. Compassion for all sentient beings wonderful weekend make sure that you make sure that you tell those people around you that are important to you that you love them remember that nothing's guaranteed not even tomorrow so take full advantage of today there's no time for petty fighting and arguments just time to show people how much you care for them so remember that today on lovers day or valentine's day and make sure you show those people around you a lot of love.